Good morning, Rams, and welcome to this week's K-Ram. My name is Arlo Kaminsky. And I'm Carter Phillips. The Pennies for Patients contest continues this week between the classes. Make sure to contribute to your class for the win. The winning class gets popsicles and bragging rights as they support Bald for Bucks and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. In other Bald for Bucks fundraising news, last week we had a dodgeball tournament. All the proceeds for the tournament go to Bald for Bucks as well. And the Balls of Glory was the winning team. Karim sent a news crew to cover the event. On February 24th, eight teams competed in the dodgeball tournament in order to raise money for Bald for Bucks. The finale held a surprise where the winning team, Balls of Glory, faced against a team of Rampart staff, resulting in our students' victory. We said go. Both teams had to go to the right side to get three dodgeballs each, and uh, that kind of alleviated the overstepping the lines, grabbing the dodgeball at the same time, running into each other, so it's kind of a safety thing. We were dialed in, man. We were ready to play, locked in on our game, but at the end we kind of got sidetracked and got too distracted. I think we did really good. We were the underdogs going into this. Everybody was like, we're going to destroy the soccer boys, but you know what? We came out and we performed. That was one of the strengths of our team is we were all very diverse in our skills and so no one ever carried. I would make like bigger teams, like make sure you get players to like help you get the balls that like roll. Get all the baseball players and softball players on one team and you guys will be cracked and it'll be fine. Furthermore, the teams would devise strategies hoping to gain the leg up in this tournament. It was kind of hard. No matter what we did, I think we didn't really have a very good chance against the, the older guys. So um, we could have maybe like employed a strategy of like throwing all the dodgeballs at the same time. Our secret weapon was definitely Zane. Um, he has a special Miyagi serve, so. Going towards the feet, so it's harder for people to catch. I guess the only throwing style that, I, that was kind of unique, I guess, is just like snake eyes. Like you look at this guy, and then you throw at that guy. You throw, you throw a, a, a decoy dodgeball up in the air, and then you throw your dodgeball, you hurl it under it, and uh, gets them every time. I think the team that attacks first and plays more aggressive is usually the winner. The event is a great way to spend time with your friends, bonding over a fun competition. Uh, next year, I would say just make a team. It doesn't matter if you are nervous or scared. I mean, it's fun even if you lose. Sign up. It is so much fun. It was the best activity for school. Enjoy, just like get a crazy uniform, have fun, get like a walkout song, um, and just enjoy the opportunity to raise money for Ball for Bucks. Most of the time there's going to be one team that's going to dominate the whole tournament regardless, so um, just getting all your friends together and having a fun time and doing something afterward too can just be a really fun way to bond with all your classmates. Please consider signing up next year. This is Enrique Alvarez signing off. We hope everyone had a great time as they raised money for Ball for Bucks, and congrats to the winners. Recently, IB science classes met outside the regular class time to do some cross-discipline science projects. Karen was there to document the day. Two weeks ago, all of the IB sciences here at Rampart took an in-school field trip in an attempt to connect with the different branches of science. KRAM wanted to learn more. So the overall IB project was basically taking like real-world problems, mostly about climate change was the kind of theme for this year. The goal of that is pretty much to bring the sciences together because one of IB's things is it's supposed to show like intercontextuality and showing that like everything is connected. So we had to make like a five to ten minute video based off like Mythbusters on like common environmental information that may or not, may not be true. So our group's project this year was on nuclear energy. So we decided to say, hey, how effective is nuclear energy compared to something like fossil fuels? Our group's project was like snow edible to eat, with, like in industrialized places with a lot of chemical and life. Our group's project was about it to like to what extent do cow farts contribute to like global warming and all that. Um, it was really fun, especially since like all. Basically like every IB science student was there and there was a lot of people to talk to and learn basically about these different sciences. Cameron wanted to ask these students about all of the benefits of being an IB. I feel like enjoy is a strong word but it's more of a benefits of being in the program that keep me in it. Okay. I get to learn a lot more about like especially like more common uh, and like relevant events in physics, things like that. What I enjoy about being an IB is I want the international diploma just in case I want to go to college abroad. 
Um, and that's pretty much what's keeping me in it, just that diploma. I, I like, like, the classes are really fun, the teachers are really good. It's a really close community and everything, so, I mean, you get motivated a lot with all the, because the class are kind of hard and you're with a lot of these different people, so. IB credits look good on a college transcript. Um, being an IB benefits me because it's definitely, like, academically rigorous. So, I don't know, it's probably just to some extent preparing me for college. But to reckon uh, IB class to somebody, I would probably say, number one, IB physics. If you're thinking about doing an advanced physics program or anything like that, IB physics is for you. It might be two years, but you're going to go a lot more than depth and then just doing like AP Physics 1, AP Physics C. Just like time management, keeping up with everything. However, the teachers are really kind. I won't say that they're going to be forgiving, but I will say that they will work with you the best they can in order to help you uh, achieve your goal of getting your diploma. I recommend staying on top of your work because the workload is pretty prominent. Thank you, Rams. This has been Sage Kahnmeyer reporting for Gay Ram. We hope everyone enjoyed learning about the different types of science and made some strong international baccalaureate group four projects. Speaking of the laws of science and physics, the drafting class had an engineering exercise yesterday. They built bridges from balsa wood and then tested them to see how much pressure the bridges could withstand. What was it? Oh, it's actually going to It went higher. 23. You may know about the drafting class that Rampart offers to students, but did you know that this semester, Rams are doing something a little different? Students are designing and building their own bridges using their knowledge of architecture. KRAM decided to dig a little bit deeper on what this entails. Bridge building is a project we do in drafting where we completely construct a bridge um, made out of small little sticks of wood and we have to later test the bridge to see how much weight it'll hold. You basically just get pieces of balsa wood and we glue them together into a, a bridge. It's a design competition that for the state where there's a set of parameters that all the students have to build their bridge to and then what we do is they build the bridges out of wood and then we have a machine that tests them and crushes them and sees how much weight their bridges can hold. When creating these bridges, students have a detailed thought process that goes into it. Things such as stability, complexity, and overall designs are all factors when building these bridges. Uh, the design of my bridge mainly is just built to hold as much weight as possible. I used a lot of truss in my bridge, just so that it distributes the weight evenly. Uh, I looked up on Google, and then I asked the teacher if it was good enough, and she said yeah. So. Yesterday, after students broke their bridges, they then calculated the efficiency of their bridge. This way, they could figure out what they can improve on for next time. I think they've learned a lot of different skills. They've learned, obviously, how to design something. And then they have to take that design, they have to build it out of wood, so they had to learn woodworking skills, how to hold things together, how to cut your pieces right and glue them. And then some of the students had some things fail that they had to work on and fix, so then that's problem solving. Before the bridge breaking, students predicted how much they believe their bridge would be able to hold. Probably not a lot. I'm guessing like 50 pounds. It's, it's, it's a stable bridge. Like it's compact and it's heavy. But I feel like I didn't glue it properly enough to hold enough weight type of thing. So hopefully it holds a lot, but I don't think so. We wish you luck on all of your future endeavors in the drafting class, Rams. This has been Maddie Spooner reporting for Kate Ram. Truly, our community is getting closer every day, tearing down walls and building bridges. On March 3rd, our RHS choir groups went up to Greeley for a college-level singing clinic offered by UNC. They sang together to get critique and feedback at the clinic about how they can improve as musicians. With a concert last week and a trip to UNC Greeley, the choir has been very active the past few days. Karen asked a few members why they joined. I joined choir because I wanted to have more, like, expression with myself and I wanted to show off like talents and have more fun, make friends, and it was a good opportunity for stuff like that. <laughs> um, I joined choir because I've been doing choir since I was in elementary school and I've always found it pretty fun to just sing along with people that I get along with. I joined choir because I like the unity aspect of it. It's essentially uh, one voice, so everybody works together to create this like one full voice that 
speaks to you and you can do different songs and, and it's very diverse but it also has a bit of like like a point of connection between it all and so I think that's what I like about it the most. Karim also asked what happens at choir rehearsals. We um, sing in choir. We do concerts like four times a year um, and it's just a super fun activity to do. I learn how to sight sing and read notes. I sing songs. We work on singing arrangements from other people. Sometimes it can be pop songs that we requested or it'll be something original that I've never heard of. But either way, I do like a lot of the songs that we do there. JASA is an upcoming event for the choir. Here they perform their music for judges and receive feedback. Karim asked a few choir members for their thoughts. Chassa is a kind of a competition, but it's not really a competition. We are like getting judged on our performance of different songs. Um, we are basically judged in different categories, and then we do a little clinic afterwards. So Chassa is a, good, um, a great opportunity to work with clinics to learn about more about your voice and see like what you need to work on, what you want to move on with, and what you could do in the future. Um, learning more about what you could do to improve yourself for future stuff like Allstate and stuff like that. Last year we sung some of our songs in front of judges and then received feedback and he worked with us. Um, one of the judges came up onto the stage and he basically taught us some new things that we could apply to our music and then we did a little um, sight reading afterwards where we sight read some kind of simple music but it wasn't that simple. I'm so excited to um, do this again because now that I know more about what they're gonna do I'm like excited to be like whoa! <laughs> Make sure to wish choir good luck on this year's Chassa Rams. This has been Logan Bear for KRAM, signing off. We hope they enjoyed their trip, and we wish them luck since All-State competition is coming up soon. Rampart has a diverse offering of classes for those who like to learn about new perspectives. The Black History class is in its second year and going strong. It is a great example of ways students can gain more understanding of our history. One of the classes gaining interest in Rampart studies Black History and its impact on society. The Black History class offers new outlooks for students by using first-hand articles and accounts from African American leaders and culturally important work. The students who are taking the class let us know what the class is about. Uh, it's a class where you kind of learn about like black history and like their perspective on things? Personally I take it because I feel like I could be more educated on the subject because they don't really teach it a lot in normal history so it's nice to have a separate class where it's just, it's just educating me about my culture and my people. Um, I mean we haven't really done too many projects but like the assignments are more like um, they're like map work we take notes a lot but like they're pretty interesting Mr. Shrex is a good teacher. Um, my mother, uh, at her college graduation back in the early 1960s, the commencement speaker was Martin Luther King. And she, like many students at their commencements, um, didn't remember anything of what he had said. This was before the I Have a Dream speech. And um, so it's been kind of a point of conversation between the two of us of how we could uh, find out what he, what he said. In fact, I, I went back to the, the library at her school and asked if they had a transcript of his speech that day. And I found that and it was inspiring as everything that he, he said. With the class as an elective, it helps students that take it broaden their perspectives. I'd say learning about like each different perspective of American history is a good way to like kind of broaden your way of understanding. Rampart being a, a, a school of a fair amount of ethnic diversity uh, and with a generation of, of young people like yourselves who are more interested in our nation's past, why our country is still wrestling with some of the problems that we are, we thought that this would be a nice addition to kind of help, help your generation understand our country and its identity a little bit better. So. Students share why they feel the need to take the class and why others should take it as well. It's a really big, important part of history. Everybody should know it, and I don't think it should just be one separate class. I think it should be, everybody should take it and it should be a thing, like a big thing. One of the nice things about a, an elective class like this is that um, while we do take tests and quizzes, we still do some kind of normal traditional things, um, there is an opportunity for me, especially given the subject matter, um, to explore some 
some things like art and music and culture. Uh, one of my favorite lessons is on uh, the origins of jazz and blues music. Uh, Mr. Kuntzius helped me out with getting those ready and we actually listened to some music. Stop by Mr. Siraki's class in room 240 for more information or talk to your counselor. This has been Payson Shepard reporting for CARE. Thanks to Payson for that report. As we finish up this week, we would like to remind everyone that the Bald for Bucks assembly tomorrow is an important part of our school community. As you attend, make sure to support your fellow Rams as they shave their heads. Be respectful and be welcoming to our hero family. Keenan, our hero child and cancer survivor, will be speaking with his family to kick off the assembly. It's an especially important day for him as he's joining us for his birthday. The event will be live streamed for any friends and family at home on our KRAM YouTube channel. That's all for this week, Rams. I'm Marla Kaminsky. And I'm Carter Phillips. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning, tuning in. in. And... Action. Sorry. Oh, oh. Hey, we gotta do like a cool ending. What do you What do you want to do? I don't know. Words. 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 <laughs> English wasn't actually my first language. It was tomfoolery. Be sure to support our. <laughs> 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 To be. That, that is, is the, the question. question. <laughs> yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs>